<laughs> the lines, the lines is here. I'm gonna make a quick stop by that body shop. And I wanted to stop by here because this is the lines auto works. If you can see, you see the name. I think this is route 11, if I'm not mistaken, from straight out of Fort Drum going into Watertown. And this was the guy who installed my first lip kit, the first version. Now, the lip kit I have is the same version as the first one I had because I like it so much that I decided to buy it again. But the lines was the uh, shop that installed my first lip kit. And, and I remember I, I dropped off the car. Back then it was silver. I dropped off the car and I was super nervous because I've never done such a mod before in a car. I, I worried how it was going to look, you know, plus the car wasn't lowered. And it turned out pretty great. I'm going to try to find an old picture of that of that lip kit on the car with the lip kit. And uh, yeah, so the lines, the lines... Uh, that's the shop that did the work and uh they did and, and and the work was okay i mean i had it when i was in germany uh i've had it for about five years but yeah this is it and uh look like he's busy as usual <laughs> good good times the lines good times we are in dealership alley in watertown I wanted to show you guys, like, you know, give you guys an idea of how many dealerships are, are here before I tell you my story or stories rather. Um, I, I thought it would be fun to do something like a, like a Vin Wiki car stories, but I have three interesting stories <laughs> to come out of Watertown dealership alley. So let's do it. So just to give you an idea. We got Nissan, we got Toyota, we got a whole bunch of other, uh, there's a whole bunch of other dealerships down there. I just want to go to the street and show you. We got Subaru, Hyundai, those weren't there before, I think. Uh, So, so again, the sun is behind me, so it's gonna be hard to see me, but you just have to settle for the, for the shadowy man who's speaking to you now. Um, so, the year, I think was 2000, and uh, a young broke me with, with zero credit was trying to get his first car. And I learned a lot about buying a car in credit for example did you know that bad credit is better than no credit in other words no uh no credit is worse than bad credit i know it didn't make sense to me but that's that's how it is man or how it was it's probably still the same way but I have credit now, so it's not a big issue. So I got three stories from, from Car Alley, Watertown, New York. The first car I tried to buy was at, a, at the dealership that I filmed that's down there. Um, it was a Jetta, a Volks, Volkswagen Jetta, uh, but the car was out of Canada, so the dash was in Canada. KMH not MPH so the car was also manual but the car was in the parking lot and I saw it and I pushed I was like wow it's a beautiful car black paint look really good and the sales guy approached me and 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 said and I said hey I, I really like that car then he was like huh and then he looked at the car and then he was surprised as if he wasn't tracking that car so so he went in, he was like, hmm, I don't remember seeing this car. So he went in and got the information on the car and told me how much it was. And I was like, oh, all right. So I told him, let me think about it and I, and I will come back, which I did. I think uh, it took me a couple of days and 
I came back with the intent to purchase the car or attempt to purchase the car. Um, I think at the time my dad was willing to co-sign for me it's an, uh, it's a, a long time ago, I don't remember. And uh, so I went back to the dealership and then lo and behold, the car was moved from the parking lot to the showroom. I kid you not. I was looking at it, I was like, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what happened and then the guy was like well we we saw the car after you left we went and checked it out it, it's it's like they got they had the car and it was dropped off and then they parked it there like they parked it with the other cars in the parking lot and completely forgot about it and the car was a good looking car at the time and he said well, yeah yeah we looked at it and it looked i mean it's a really good looking car so we decided to move it from the parking lot to the showroom and then to make matters worse the price went up I don't I don't recall from what to what but the price went up and suddenly is like okay I couldn't buy this car anymore and then the same salesman tried to put me in a Kia Sophia okay it was a horrible car and back then even though I though I understood that I didn't have credit and and I was in a pretty pretty tough tough spot to get financing and I kind of wasn't too too into like having my dad having to co-sign for me I kind of I wanted my first car to be something I've done myself um, so I couldn't buy the Kia Sophia because it was an ugly car to me I didn't like it and I couldn't see myself driving a car getting getting into a car I didn't like every stinking day so that deal fell through I thought it was shady they moved the car from the parking lot to the showroom and on top of that try to put me in a Kia Sophia when the intent was to get the Volkswagen Jetta amazing So, my second car story out of Car Alley, Watertown, New York. <laughs> By the way, this car wash that I'm in right now is behind the Nissan dealership and I, and I don't recall seeing the solar panels back then. This is new. Watertown has really exploded, just exploded. But anyway, um, the second story. Yes, I tried to buy a Honda Civic okay it was a uh, I forgot the year but it was recent model back then a Honda Civic Coupe SI really nice one I think I think the SI is the most fully loaded version that you could buy uh, prior uh, besides I think the next higher level would be the Honda Type R but that was it but this one was an SI so we went to the dealership saw the car I even signed a contract for the car. I think that the deal was supposed to happen. Um, I don't recall what the price was, but this is what made this story, this story rather interesting. So we agreed on a price. I signed the paperwork. And when I return to, I'm trying to remember, I think that I was able to get financing for that car on my own and I went back to finalize things in terms of with the financing because I think the contract I signed was it, it was like a, hey don't you sell that car I'm coming back to get this car kind of contract but but it was binding but but I had to come back with the money, with the check, and everything like that. It's, it's, it, like it was a long time ago, I, I, I don't recall the specifics, but it was something like that. So, I show up to the dealership with, with a friend of mine, um, Quinlan at the time. Uh, he was upset, pretty upset, man. So, I, I walked into the dealership and then the guy said, I'm sorry, I can't give you the SI because we did the contract for the wrong car. And I was like, wait a minute, how, how is that possible? Because we didn't speak, because there was an identical Honda, red, same color, coupe, same year, same styling, but that one was the DX model, which I think is the most 
simple version of that car. The SI is a more, more high end. It has a lot more features. So I was like, I've never talked about getting the DX. It's all this time, it's been the SI, the SI, the SI. And I already signed the, signed the paperwork for the car to get the deal going. So how is it that we are, how is it that this mistake was made? And even though it, it's, it's made, but you made the deal with me. It's like, okay, we've passed that point. Now it's about closing the deal. And the guy still stood on on his uh, on his uh, on his stance. Now nah, you you're not getting the car. And then Quinlan made the same points that I made, but he was like angry about it because he was like, "This is BS that he's supposed to be getting this car. We made the deal, and now you are reneging on it." And so what ended up happening? I was like, "It's not worth it." Let's go. But I didn't know that, know that that was possible to be able to come into come into a dealership. There are two identical cars to the exception that one is fully loaded, the other one is not, but same color, same style, uh, both coupes. And the whole time we only talked about the SI, the SI, the SI, did the paperwork for the SI, the SI, everything, SI. I haven't even brought up the DX, right? <laughs> the DX model. And then I show up the next the next time to actually drive home and then you you made a mistake you thought you thought it was the DX or that contract track was for the DX it's like he was trying to get me hyped up for the SI and sneak sneak me sneak me the DX it's like seriously dude another story I have was uh, I was trying to buy this Z. What's it? Was, uh, not a Nissan Z, but it was. It was a Chevy, a Chevy Cavalier, but there's a Z model. So, so the way it goes is that, like, like the Chevy Cavaliers, there are different kinds of models, but. One of the most advanced models are is the Z something, Z20, something like that. And that one was manual. And it was the weird thing. When I tried to do the test drive on that, the manual transmission just wouldn't agree with me for some reason. Because I have a manual car, okay? The Hyundai Veloster is manual. And I was able to drive it fine. Sure, the first two weeks was weird. I was, was like, you know, stalling, but but I barely stall now. But yeah, the transmission just didn't agree with me for some reason, so I couldn't buy that car. And then I finally did buy my first car from dealership alley, Watertown. It was a 98 Dodge Stratus. I think I can find a picture of when it, of, I think I could find a picture of that car somewhere. I think I have one somewhere, so I will put it in this video. And um, so, I was back at Dealer Alley and I was walking up and down those streets, the streets I, I, I just filmed to you. I was walking up and down. There was a store down there. I, I, I walked down there, like there to like to take a rest. And I walked down again, trying to find a car. And it turns out that the Dodge Stratus was recently turned in, recently traded in. And it was being serviced and being looked at. And the guy was like, hey, I got this. And uh, the, the dealership that I went to, which is down the street, but it's not, it was more like a private dealership, uh, which I just drove by. It doesn't have a whole lot of cars. I'm assuming that they're out of business or something like that, because a lot of big names are now here. Uh, so he said, you know what? I think I might, I might have a car that you might like. And he pulled up in the green Stratus and I liked it. But the funny thing was the whole time I got the Stratus, it's a, it's a car that I could tolerate. But it wasn't my dream car. My dream car has always been getting the 01 Lexus IS 300, which I currently have right now, which I was not able to get until later, which is a separate story in itself. But this is the car I, I really wanted, though, I mean, it didn't look like that with the Superman and all that stuff. But I wanted to have that car, but I settled for the Stratus because I didn't have 
credit and that was a big issue getting financing and so the so the way i looked at the stratus was the car that i can tolerate and build credit with so that i can eventually get to have this car one day uh so the moral of that story is that you know sometimes uh like you may want this thing but but before that you could get there you have to settle for this thing and work with this thing to get to the next level to be able to get the next thing so that's what i did with the stratus those are my car stories from <laughs> ford jump car alley so when he pulled up in the green dodge stratus i actually liked it later on i, I changed the wheels that, which was a great idea but Back then, I, I, I knew I knew very little about cars. I knew very little about customizing cars. I overpaid for for a set of wheels. Granted that back then wheels were not as common as they are now. I mean, like like you no know, prices for wheels have really calmed down. But even back then, um, I did a crucial mistake with the wheels. Never finance wheels. If, if you can't buy your wheels cash for your that that's one thing I think you should buy cash for your car. You should never finance wheels for your car, which is what I did. It was a ridiculous thing to do. Um, at least it's. I mean, I did pay them off. I mean, that's good on my as, as far as I like, you know credit report. But it. I mean, when you look at the end of the matter, it's definitely so not worth it to do that. So don't finance wheels, guys. Buy your own wheels. But uh yeah so the rest is history i've had that car uh for two years 2000 through, through 2002 that's the car i used to first time to drive to new york city and that's what made me fall in love with road tripping because i enjoyed it so much i kept doing it and doing it so that was i'd, I'd say the birth of zoom 360 on the go long long before there was a youtube long before that i, I that I knew that Zoom 360 was gonna be a thing on YouTube at all. That's the car that started my love for road tripping. And um, yeah, so here we are. That car actually is in New York City, uh, down the block from where I lived behind a house in its backyard. Cause, because I later sold this car to a friend of mine and he destroyed the oil tank and he didn't repair it. He just parked it in the back of his mom's house and it's probably rotting to a slow death today but that's how i got my first car so it's my car stories for the day so yeah all right guys this is where i bought the stratus from this dealership right here so I'm not sure if this is going to make the vlog, but this is the Lake Ontario Playhouse. And, well, it used to be. I'm not sure if it still is, but this, uh, when I was here, was a comedy uh, place, uh, club. Uh, I used to come here Saturday nights, and it was, it's so awesome. It is so awesome. Like the acts that used to come here used to really rock the stage and the food. I remember I used to I used to starve myself the whole day Saturday just to end up here Saturday night and eat <laughs> what they had to offer here. So oh my gosh. Um I think it's closed because of COVID. I looked it up and this business is now closed. I'm not sure if it's closed permanently or not. I think it's closed, but I had to drive up here and see it again, man. I miss this place so much, but it's too bad. I'm not sure if it's because of COVID, if it's gonna be back after COVID, I don't know. One can only hope. I'm gonna try to take a picture of the car <coughs> um, with it, so. Haha, -ha, this brings back memories. This is where I got rear-ended. It was a snowy night and I was at the light and I saw this van sliding behind me and, and all I could do is wait to get hit and wabo, I got hit. Then we parked in there to sort out insurances. Gosh. We're going to Inkwell Graphics. Inkwell Graphics, this is where the whole Superman concept was first tried and uh, done. This is it right there down the street. Inkwell Graphics. Oh man, this brings back memories. 
This brings back memories, Inkwell graphics. Back then, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do, uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the Superman permanently and I came to these guys and they made it happen. Inkwell graphics. They made the first Superman vinyl for my car. Good times, good times. Hey everybody, Zoom360 here on the go. Fun fact, we are on Interstate 81 South. So when I uh, bought my first car, this was the, the very first interstate that I took as part of a road trip. I was driving from Fort Drum to New York City and I drove through four winter storms to get there. That was interesting. But what's special about this, what's special about this piece of highway for me is this. This is where, where I fell in love with the concept of road tripping, right here. Like, I always knew that I like to, like to drive everywhere someday when I get a car, but this is when I knew like, okay, road trips are going to be a part of what I do. And it, it was this highway. This is where I, I fell in love with the concept of road tripping. I road trip to New York City. Back then there was uh, no GPS. It was just myself in a map and <coughs> looking up uh, 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 the directions online. Oh man, we've come a long way. And somehow, yeah, just you know, figuring certain things out and like you know, hoping for the best. And somehow I've managed to make it uh, to New York City without getting lost. Uh, yeah, but this is it. Interstate 81 between between Fort Drum and Syracuse. This is it. This is uh, where Zoom 360 started even before I knew that there was going to be a, a Zoom 360. And before YouTube started, I mean, this, this is it. So, yeah, I just thought I would share this with you. So, yeah.